welcome into the uh, Flippin' Hippo's YouTube channel. I'm Star the Flippin' Hippo. Today, I'm actually going to talk about once-in-a-lifetime rare plush or the most expensive plush you can find to sell on eBay. These are not going to be common items that you're going to find while you're outsourcing. These are not stuffed animals or plushies that you're going to find by the bucket full at church sales or at the Goodwill. These are rare like once in a lifetime finds. I get a lot of you asking me all the time, can I make a video on these really expensive Bolo plush or these really rare once in a lifetime one-offs? Um, because I do refer to them sometimes in some of my videos. I didn't um, really address any of them in the plush guide that I wrote um, because they're not common and you can't really build a business or a sustaining business on an item that you're going to find once or twice in your entire lifetime. So these are plush that I normally don't talk about. I try to show you guys bolos that you can find, you know, often enough that you could build enough of an inventory of plush that you're making some money. And, of course, the bread and butter and filler plush that you can find in mass quantities for really, really low cost of goods and build up a volume-based business on that. But, you guys... Um, I keep getting messages asking me for this video, so I figured instead of just sitting here and talking at you and making a list or whatever, we're going to go on to the back end of eBay and Therapy, and we're going to look at some of the solds and see what we find. Some of these you will have seen me mention before. So let me share my screen with you guys, and then we'll go hunting. Hunting for some plush. All right, I got Therapy pulled up. Now, um, with Therapy, if you guys have a store subscription, this is free for you to use. And it does go back a full year. eBay's search only goes back 90 days. So this will go back a full year, which is great if you're just comping or you just want to look at prices for something. But if you want to actually look at the original listing, there's no such thing. Because it just goes back so far that eBay doesn't have that anymore. But you can kind of see... Um, get a gist. So, allegedly, a vintage 12-inch Sonic plush sold in July for $13,000 plus nine shipping. Did it sell for that? Maybe. Could it have been shell bidding or money laundering? Maybe. I don't know. I don't know of any Sonics that are worth $13,000, but there could be one out there. Um, but you can see I have this sorted from highest to lowest, and it jumps from the most rare plush selling for thirteen dollars to the second most to $3,400, so we'll say $3,500, and then it jumps to $1,800. So, um, I don't know. Maybe it sold for that. Maybe it didn't. It says it did. It doesn't mean it did. Could have been canceled. Could have been an auction. It could have been shill bidding. If you're not aware of what shill bidding is, let's say I want to make my items look more um, worth more. So I could list, um, you know, say my phone for twenty thousand dollars. Have my friend buy it for twenty thousand and then cancel, but it's still going to show up in the solds. That's kind of like shill bidding. It's obviously not right to do, but it is against eBay policy. And it can get your account suspended. So don't do that. Put your stuff up for what it's worth. Don't worry about inflating the prices or making it look worth more. Um, but that's what shill bidding is if you've ever heard me refer to it. Then we have one that's sold in July. Uh, Tommy Sonic the Hedgehog for $3,500. That I could probably buy if it really is um, vintage. Tommy's a good brand. That's a good brand to look out for. So, maybe. Then we have a valuable, super rare. I hate superlatives like valuable and super rare put in titles. I'm just going to tell you guys that right now. I don't like those words in titles. I think it's superlative. I don't think it's necessary. I think they're adjectives that people are shoving into the titles to make their items look more worth more. And... I don't really think buyers are searching for those 
terms. If I was looking for a vintage Donkey Kong, I'd be looking for a vintage Donkey Kong. Um, vintage is absolutely an okay word to use in titles, I think, if, as long as it is authentically vintage, because that's something buyers are looking for. But when people put valuable, super rare, rare, excellent, those are just not necessary. They don't even follow the correct formula that you're supposed to be using for titles. Side note, we're looking at rare plush and you guys are getting all kinds of uh, teaching, teachable moments along the way, right? So then we have an excellent state, Donkey Kong. A vintage, amazing, wow, those are words you don't need, amazing condition, rushed in kitty cat rubber face. Now that I can believe, because we're going to look at some 90 days sold over here on eBay. There's a lot of Rushton dolls. So um, Rushton is a vintage brand, and they made dolls with hard faces. We're going to look at some of those on eBay where we can actually pull up the listings. Um, Sanrio, Bats, Maru, see huge is again a word I don't think is necessary. Jumbo, maybe. If it's a word that you're actually going to use in the item description that's from the drop down box, maybe. People are looking for it. I don't really think people search for that though, but maybe. And then you can see an 11 inch Coca Cola bear for 830. I can't get rid of these things for 10 bucks free ship. So maybe something was unique or rare about that one. But you guys, if you have a store subscription, you can go into Terry Peak. You can look back a year and you can look at all of these on your own. Go through each one. Get an idea of the really rare finds that you want to keep an eye out for. Again, you're not going to find these often. Probably once or twice in your lifetime. It's not like you're going to walk into a thrift store or go out to the next yard sale and just walk out. These are very rare. Um, there's some jelly cats in here. Um, Pusheen, she's worth money. Then we have um, Scooby-Doo. Oh, this is a collection. There's 40 plush for $400. That's believable. 10 bucks a plush. Here's a Douglas Company Disney Simba for $400. That's believable. I know I've even brought up the Douglas um, Simbas in some of my videos with you guys that they go for a lot of money. Stife Bears or Steph Bears, I'm not sure how to pronounce that. I know it's a Bolo brand. S-T-E-I-F-F. -F. You want to be looking for that. You can see this bear went for $400. Um, let's look at a couple more and then we'll jump over to eBay. Um, Heritage Question Gans. A really big vintage Gans might be worth three, four hundred. dollars um, Here's some more of those Rushtons. So let's go over to eBay where we can actually look at these actual listings. So this is um, the Simba five foot Douglas Lion King plush. Now this is Mufasa actually. So this one is Mufasa. It says a best offer was accepted. So he didn't sell for 2000. We don't know what he sold for, um, but not 2000, but probably pretty close to it. It's from 1994. It is Mufasa. Um, let's see. I know there's a Simba here. Here's another Mufasa that sold for $1,200. Um, there are some Simbas. I'm just not seeing them. But yeah, Mufasa sells for a lot. And I know there's Simbas that sell for like two, three, four hundred bucks. So if you ever see the very rare, very ginormous Douglas Lion King plushes, whether it's Simba or Mufasa, I would snatch it up. Um, you can see that Mufasa goes for at least a thousand. This is a claw arcade machine, so we don't care about that. A vintage Giggle Eye Monster. So I've heard about these before. These are from the 80s. I actually believe I may have even had one very similar when I was a kid. He's got on his feet, it says geekly eyes. It's his face. He's kind of not cute. <laughs> 
He is uh, by those characters, 1988 Tamfort by Pell Buster. He's pretty cool. He sold for like $1,600. So you want to keep your eyes out for those 80s My Pet Monsters. Um, this is a Jumbo Plush Life Realistic Plush. I tell you guys those Realistic Plush do well. Not all of them do this well. Not $1,500 well. But of course, this guy is pretty big. You can see he's pretty ginormous. And he's uh, by a brand that's going to do for a little bit better. Um, Plush Life Cross Fox Plush. This is the dark ver furred version. So he may even have a lighter furred version. All right, so let's move on. The next thing is an Aurora Jumbo Teddy Bear. He did not sell for $1,500. He sold for best offer, so we don't know what he sold for. Here's another Giggly Eyes. This one went for four, a little less than $1,400. Best offer. All right, here's a Rushton. So I wanted to show you these Rushton rubber face animals. They are vintage. Most of them that you're going to see are not in the most excellent, greatest condition. And that's okay. I've seen damaged one of these go for a couple hundred dollars. Even with damage, um, matted fur, they can still go for a couple hundred. So don't shy away from these Rushtons. Um, this one has, this is a kitty cat. They all are like little plushies with hard rubber faces. Um, here's another one. This is a pink bear. Oh, it says or similar. So did they not even really know if they had a rushed in? Doesn't matter. It sold for 1200 bucks almost. Look at it. Isn't it cute? And here's some more um, Mufasas, Simbas. Went for a thousand bucks. Oh, gosh, I went for a thousand. Excuse me. Here's another rush gym. This is the clown rabbit. They have a Rudolph reindeer. So how can you tell a rush gym when you see it? They're going to look old. They look vintage. Um, they have rubber faces and soft bodies. And they typically have a very similar face, even though it's different. You can tell by the eyes and the smile. You can sit here and look through the solds um, if you ever have. None of us have spare time. But when you have spare time, if you want to learn about Rushton's, you can Google them, of course. But I just learned what they look like and what to look for by looking through the solds. Their faces are very similar. If you just look at a bunch of them um, in a row, you can see that similarity. And kind of like the way this, the mouth is and the eyes. See what I mean? But if you ever see a plush um, with the hard face and the soft body, chances are it's a rush tin. I'm trying to see if, yeah, there's one of the examples of their tags, the rush tin company. And this one didn't have tags. That's another thing you can do if you want to learn about plush. Um, there's another Rushton company. They're in, in Atlanta, Georgia on the tag. You can look at tags. You can go through solds and pick, you know, I want to learn about this expensive. Here's another one. Um, plush. Let me look at how they look. Are there any char characteristics that are the same that I will notice from across the room? Because I wanted to be familiar enough with Rushton's that I could walk into a garage sale and see a Rushton across the yard on a table amongst other plush that aren't that valuable and know what I'm looking at and be lying across that yard to grab it before someone else could. I want to know what they look like. I want to be familiar with them so I can spot them from across the room. Also so that I know what I'm looking at. A lot of people will look at these and think they're not valuable and they really are. So this guy, he's got kind of the same smile and eyes. Let's see his tag. Again, it just says the Russian company, Atlanta, Georgia. So you can get familiar with their faces and their tags. You can do that with any brand. Um, in fact, since Keith and I are all self-taught, what we didn't learn by buying everything super, super cheap in the beginning and making a lot of mistakes, 
buy, um, we would go to the bins and just buy tons of stuff by the pound. We would get a 99 cent day. We would go to uh, sales where I could get plush for a quarter. We would bring everything home and learn about it that way. Oh, this is a bolo. Definitely look for this brand again. This is a good bread and butter. This is poop. Don't ever source that again. That's mainly how we learned. But I also spent a ton of time online looking through sales or solds on the back end of eBay, looking through therapy. You can look up solds on Sellhound as well. Um, Sellhound costs money to use to list, but it's free to just look up stuff on. So you can look up stuff there as well. Um, and that's what I did. I just looked at stuff. I got familiar with it. I could spot a Rushton from across the room, and I've never seen one in person. But I know what they look like enough that I could see one. So I just looked at tags and I just look at stuff. Um, I study sell-through rates. You guys know that Keith and I also write guides. So when we do the guides, we do a ton of research on the back end as well. And so we've just been self-taught. And it's easy to do, you guys. Just go whatever. Um, you have some spare time. I just put plush stuffed animal. And on the side here, I made sure they were used and sold. And then I sorted them by highest plus shipping to lowest price so I could see what the most valuable and what the most rare ones were. Um, here's another My Pet Monster. This one is the 1986 Boaster. I think this is the one I had when I was a kid. He looks familiar. I believe that's... Don't we all wish we still had our toys from when we were kids? Man. Yep, this is him because he had the orange handcuffs. Now, if you've ever find those orange handcuffs by themselves, say the yard sale or a thrift store, because so, again, a lot of people don't know what they have. They don't see the value in old toys or old plush. And I've seen folks that get these handcuffs by themselves. They're just thrown in a toy bin at a yard sale, you know, or a church sale. And they'll sell for a couple hundred on their own. Just the handcuffs, they'll sell for a couple hundred. But if you have the plush plus the handcuffs, you're looking at 1200 So um, that's pretty cool. Keep your eyes out, for, definitely, for these um, huge Douglas Lion Kings, any of these My, my Pet Monsters from the 80s and 90s, these huge jumbo realistic plush. Rushtons are a definite bolo, and they are rare. Here's another Sonic that sold for 1200 so you want to look for those old video game plush. Um, yeah, these are things that I would love to find on a regular basis, but I think I'm going to be lucky if I ever find one. Just one. I would love to find just one Rushton. Look at this frog. Look at this Rushton frog. Even the frog has a similar face. That smile. The way they do their cheeks. Almost like a Joker smile. I was going to see if he had a picture of his tags. He's got a B. Isn't he cute? His tuxedo. All right. So um, let's go back and look. Just kind of skim down the page real quick and see what else there is. Because there's a ton of Rushton's back here. Um, this first page of the highest amount has a ton of Rushton's. There's an FAO Shores uh, large plush wolf. Um... Hinton Associates Labyrinth plush that sold for six hundred. More than my pet monsters. More Rushton. More Rushton. Here's another FAO Shorts Wolf. Another Pusheen. More Rushton. More Pusheen. More Rushton. Um, yeah, those Rushton plush are definitely <laughs> something I really wish I could find. At least once in my lifetime, I'd be happy. More than once would be really good, too, though. But see their smile? It's kind of creepy in a way. But, yeah, you guys can just go on the back end here and search and kind of get yourself familiar with these and then keep your eyes out for them um, when you're outsourcing. And you may luck out and you may find one of these one day. Um, it's not so rare that I don't know anyone that hasn't had these. I have a couple of friends that have had Rushton's. I know that Casey, the Rockstar Flipper, has sold one of the big Lion Kings from Douglas. So I second degree know folks who have found these plush. So they're not like so rare that they're never going to be found. They're just rare.
All right, let me know what you think down in the comments below, guys. Hit the thumbs up before you leave. Really helps the channel. If you haven't already and you'd like to, please subscribe to the channel. Help us feed a hungry hippo. Don't forget to join our Facebook group, Flippin' Hippos Reseller Pod. You can search for it on Facebook or use the link down below. Until next time, go be productive, go make some money, go do some research so you know what to source for. And as always, thank you so, so much for watching. Y'all are the best. Bye.